Hey, welcome back into the Wells Tech Garage for this month's episode of Tech Connect. Happy Friday to everyone. I hope everyone had a great week working on cars. Now today in the Tech Connect episode, we have a bunch of stuff sitting in front of me here. That's because I want to talk about our question from our last class. Last class, we were covering the diagnostics and testing for rich and lean conditions. Uh, we were working on the GTO and showing just a bunch of different tests that you could perform depending on how your car was reacting. So if you haven't seen that, make sure to check that out. In that class, I asked a question that was a little bit more difficult this time. Um, not only was it a Tech A, Tech B style question, but it also involved a why. Question was, Tech A says a vehicle with a stuck open EGR valve will cause a rich code. Technician B says a vehicle with a stuck open EGR valve will cause a lean code. Now, I had a lot of answers from you guys. I have a stack of correct and a stack of incorrect here. And uh, judging by how many incorrect there were, I want to explain this more. I want to get into it. I want to, um, I just, yeah, I just want to get into it because I think it's going to be a great, uh, it'll be a great little lesson for this episode of Tech Connect. So when I asked you guys the question, a lot of you guys were asking, well, is it a MAP sensor, mass airflow sensor? What are the specifics on this? And I intentionally didn't include any specifics on this. I wanted to see what you guys would say. Because this is the style of question that has very many answers. I guess, theoretically, there is no wrong or right answer to this question. There's no one answer that will say, this is correct or incorrect. It's, it's got so many variables. There's so many different things. Map or mass airflow sensor motor. Is it old? Is it a feedback EGR? Is it something newer? Uh, excuse me, is it old without a feedback EGR? Is it something newer with a feedback EGR system? You know, what are the variables? Are we at idle? Are we at load? How far is the EGR stuck open? Where does the EGR feed into the intake manifold? Does it go into individual ports? Does it feed the intake manifold in its large tank chamber design? There's so many variables to this question that it's hard for you guys or hard for me to say whether it's right or wrong. There was one wrong answer right off the bat that I want to just point out and that would be that the engine would run lean because it is getting unmetered air. Well I want to shoot that one out of the way right away because EGR gas is not unmetered air. EGR gas is inert gas being pumped in to the intake manifold into the cylinder just taking up space. It is not um, causing like a vacuum leak like you would think. So doesn't make a difference mass airflow or MAP sensor. An EGR leak, EGR stuck open is not an unmetered air leak like a, like a vacuum leak or something like that. It is an unmetered leak but it's leaking inert gas which is just taking up room inside of our intake manifold or in, inside of our cylinder. It's just filler. It's not um, combustible. It's not a combustible gas. It's not going to be read by our oxygen sensor, okay? Uh, most of you guys got the MAP sensor part of it right. A MAP sensor will run rich, right? Uh, our intake manifold vacuum drops or pressure increases, however you want to say it. Whenever the vehicle's under load, you know, when we crack the throttle open, our vacuum goes down. Or if our EGR valve were to, to come open or stick open, we would drop an engine vacuum or increase in, in pressure inside of here. The vehicle would falsely think that it's under load and it would add fuel. Our pulse width from our injectors would go up. The computer would say, I'm under load, let's add fuel. And we would run rich, okay? So we would most likely set a rich code and we would see our fuel trim start to ratchet down in the negative to start to so, um, subtract that fuel back. So map sensor, most of you guys got that one right. Now when it comes to mass airflow, this is where it gets tricky because we need to determine is this a modern vehicle that uses a feedback EGR like, uh, like this Chrysler one right here that's a five wire, it's got a position sensor in it, or like a Ford vehicle that uses a, um, a DPFE, like a flow sensor for the EGR, is the PCM able to monitor if the EGR is stuck open or not? Okay, that's a huge factor in this. Now, if we were talking that, chances are this thing would not set a richer lean code. It would most likely set some sort of EGR position code, something like that. Um, um, excessive flow, something like that, would most likely be set in a, in a case like this. Now, 
if a vehicle, and, and we're talking probably older vehicles here that aren't using a position sensor in the EGR valve but have a mass airflow sensor, it is possible, possible that those engines could run rich or could run lean or could run pretty much stoichiometric, okay? It's all going to depend on a lot of different variables. So let's, um, let's first talk about what exactly is going on when our EGR valve opens up, okay? So our intake manifold is flowing air. We have air flow past our mass airflow sensor and it's reading probably grams per second past our mass airflow into our intake manifold. Then that flows down into our cylinder and depending on if it's GDI or multi-port um, multi injection or whatever, it's getting fuel injected into it, mixing at emission standard 14.7 to one, filling up our cylinder exploding and going past our oxygen sensor reading 14.7 to 1, just like it's supposed to for emissions, okay? But what happens if all of a sudden we open up the EGR valve and it sticks? Okay, now our EGR valve is stuck open. Well, initially, what does that mean? We're not able to flow as much oxygen, right? Um, our oxygen is being displaced by this EGR gas. We'll call this our EGR gas right here, okay? So our cylinder right now, it's still the same size. The cylinder doesn't change in size unless it's uh, that new infinity motor that's going to be variable, uh, variable compression. But uh, our cylinder is unable to change in size on most motors, we'll say. Unable to change in size. So it's, it's this big. This is how big our cylinder is. Now, when our EGR valve is closed and there was no EGR gas in there, it's able to flow 14.7 to 1 mixture of air and fuel into the cylinder just like this. But if we have our EGR gas flowing into our intake manifold taking up room, our engine is not able to breathe as much air. So what do we have? We have less oxygen being mixed with immediately the same amount of fuel that was from before. Well, what do we know already? I just said less oxygen. We know less oxygen means rich, means our O2 sensor is going to go high, eight, 900 millivolts, somewhere in there. And our computer is going to do what? It's going to start to subtract back on our fuel. It's going to bring our fuel trims negative. So a mass airflow sensor could run rich, right? Now, that would be one case. Now, is it possible that once this thing starts to ratchet back those fuel trims, ratchet them down back onto the negatives, what we're doing now is we're matching the amount of air to the amount of or excuse me, we're ratcheting the amount of fuel to the amount of air we're able to flow. So our EGR valve is now open. The computer knows there's something going on. Our mass airflow sensor here is reading less grams per second, right? Because we're filling up our intake manifold with inert, useless filler gas inside of there. Our EGR gas is being filled in there. Our mass airflow sensor will most likely go down in grams per second. Less oxygen going past mass airflow less flow, the computer's going to react and give us less fuel. So at that point, we could potentially be putting a 14.7 to 1 mixture into our cylinder with our EGR gas. What does that come out to be then? Probably just fine past our O2 sensor. But this is where you're going to notice some really, really poor running. Because the vehicle, the piston is still in there. The cylinder is essentially smaller at this point because it's being filled with this EGR gas. So this would turn out to be a very, very poor running engine if it runs at all because it's just, it's lacking power, right? It, it potentially could at this point be running stoichiometric because the computer has reacted and adjusted the fuel because that's all it's able to do is adjust fuel to what it thinks was a rich condition. So it adjusts the fuel so it's going to scale back the fuel in line with the amount of oxygen the mass airflow sensor is reading, dump it into the cylinder, fire the spark plug, and hopefully create a combustion event. All right? But now that combustion event is much smaller because the volume is being taken up by our EGR gas. So we get the computer's got the mixture right at 14.7 to 1. We dump this in here like so. And now instead of our combustion event, event excuse me, being this large here, our combustion event is only this large. Basically, our engine would be severely lacking power, but you can tell that our mixture is still the same, right? 14.7 to 1. They're still the same shade of green, still the same shade of 
are still the same mix of air and fuel. So our engine would be very much so lacking power, but potentially after the computers reacted, we could go to a stoichiometric, close to stoichiometric mixture if the combustion event completes properly. Now, if we are flooding so much EGR gas into this cylinder where the cylinder doesn't fire, so we're adding the right amount of air, we're adding the right amount of fuel according to the mass airflow sensor, we're adding everything right of what the computer is seeing, put it in the cylinder, light it with the spark plug, and it doesn't complete the combustion event or there's not enough air and fuel in there to complete a combustion event, then we end up with a misfire on that cylinder. Now if that cylinder misfires, now we have a bunch of raw oxygen flowing past our O2 sensor, potentially, depending on EGR flow rate, could cause us to run lean. If we had a very small EGR problem and a misfire, we could have a lean condition. If there was so much EGR gas flowing that there's not enough room for oxygen there, we could still have a rich problem. So, like I said earlier, guys, there's really no right or wrong. It's going to be by situation of what you're dealing with. I'm sure many of you guys have dealt with stuck open EGR valves that have shown rich, many have shown lean, but I bet majority of EGR valves that you guys have dealt with have set a code for EGR. Most of our vehicles nowadays have position sensors on our EGR valves. So I guess to sum it up, mass airflow sensor could run rich, could run lean, or it could potentially run very, very close to stoichiometric if our combustion event is completing and then our vehicle would just run very poor, lacking power because our combustion event would be very small. So I hope that makes sense. Um, I like the little bit of a visual. I think it helps to, to understand this. I hope you guys appreciate that, but uh, great. All right, so I think that's the answer to that. All right, now let's talk about our next class. Next class is going to be on May 4th, 11 a.m., 2 p.m. Central Time, like always. And we are, like I said before in the last Tech Connect, we are finally going to be ending on fuel trims. This is going to be our last class talking about fuel trims. We are going to be doing a mass airflow sensor case study. And I also have a Beamer 3 Series in here that we are going to be looking at a lean code on as well that just happened to come in last week. Uh, so we're just going to take a quick peek at that, but we are going to be doing that mass airflow uh, case study on our Chevy Colorado. Uh, that's May 4th, 11 a.m. and 2 p.m. Central Time. I hope to see you guys there. Now, don't forget, our survey is out there right now. It's in the description here of the video. Right down here, you'll see a link to the survey. It takes like two minutes. It's eight questions, I believe. Um, if you answer it completely, fill everything out like you're supposed to, you will be entered into the drawing to win one of these awesome Wells Tech work shirts here with your name on it. That drawing will be on June 1st. Everybody who enters and completes the survey will be entered to win the random drawing happening at the end of the day on June 1st, okay? So, all right, I think that's going to be about it for today. I hope you guys have a great weekend and I hope to see you on May 4th at either 11 a.m. or 2 p.m. Central Time. Thank you.